Air resistance is our biggest boundary when we're riding a bike. So to make ourselves faster, we basically want to cheat the wind. And that's where aerodynamics comes in. But to make ourselves more aero and to save ourselves watts on the bike, it doesn't necessarily need to cost us an arm and a leg. You can do it actually quite cheaply. So today I'm gonna to be running you through my top aero hacks. Okay, if you're serious about your aerodynamics, then you probably already have an aero helmet like this one. But have you actually thought about the tilt of that helmet when it's on your head? I mean, it is all very well having a nice aero helmet with a pointy tail, but to really optimize the helmet's aerodynamics, ideally, you want that tail fitting snugly into your back. And therefore, that will allow the air to flow smoothly over the helmet and into your back. If it's not fitting snugly into your back, then you'll then have the air flowing over through a gap, creating disturbance before then hitting your body. You don't want that. So you can, of course, adjust your head and the tilt of that. But a nice option to then really further optimize it is to add some increased padding towards the front of the helmet, so around the forehead and the front of the head there. Now in the past, I've used something called go-kart seat padding, very similar to this where I have some sticky tape on one side and then a nice thick foam around 10 millimeters. The go-kart seat padding comes in a nice big sheet that you can then cut to size and then stick that in a nice safe manner within the helmet. But of course, the rules are a little bit wishy-washy on adapting and modifying a helmet. So if you really want to err on the side of caution, you can just get existing padding from your supplier or the manufacturer of your helmet. Sometimes they do increase thickness, so you could of course just buy that. If they don't, you can just buy more padding and then just stick that on top of the existing padding. Okay, so this one might seem a little bit picky and pedantic, but to be honest, that is what aerodynamics is all about. Now you see this cable here, now that cable is coming from the shifters at the end through to the base bar and into the frame. That is not good. That is not aerodynamic at all. Basically, you've got the air flowing around that riser block there, it's narrowing out at the back of the riser block and then into the cable. Might be small, but that's disturbance and we don't want that. So to eliminate that, we're gonna use a little bit of tape like this electrical tape here. We're gonna wrap it around the riser block and the cable. So now when the air flows round the riser block, it's gonna flow around the riser block and the cable all in one. So therefore smoothening out the airflow, simple. Okay, if you thought that last one was a little bit over the top, then just wait for this one because I'm now going to be covering some of the bolts and openings on my frame. Now, this is actually really popular in the cycling and time trial world where attention to detail is absolutely key. And if you think about it, you've got a nice smooth frame, the air flowing nice and smoothly over the frame, and then it goes through a little bolt or a little opening in the frame. It's going to disturb the air just a little bit, but it is still something. And we do tend to get quite a lot of bolts and openings around the stem area. We've got a lot of parts going together. So to eliminate that again, we're going to use a little bit of electrical tape just to place that over those bolts and openings. Or to do it really neatly, you can of course get some nice thin plastic, which is taped and sticky on one side. And then you can cut that to size, place that on those parts, and you can even get that in carbon effect. Okay, for this next one, I have switched bikes because I'm now gonna be focusing on the bar tape and the previous bike had its own bar tape solution of its own. Now, I have spoken about this a little bit before. When we're using a TT and triathlon bike, we're gonna be in the aero bars for most of it. A lot of our weight going through our elbows, not so much on the end of the bars, particularly the base bar. So do we really need this bar tape that is potentially causing a disturbance of the air as it flows over the bars? I don't really think so. And now some athletes actually opt to completely remove it and leave it completely bare. However, I'd say, given that we are doing triathlons and we're going from a swim to the bike, we're gonna have wet hands, we're gonna want a little bit of grip there, particularly if we're gonna be racing in wet conditions as well. So that's where something like this grip tape comes in. Yes, this is skateboard grip tape. It's grippy on one side like sandpaper, and on the other side, we've got an adhesive. So we can simply cut this to size wrap it around the handlebars, and there we go. 
Okay, I'm gonna stick with this bike for this one as now I'm gonna talk about our quick release bolts and our throw axles. Now manufacturers spend a long time working on the aerodynamics of the bike, but it sort of feels like the quick release bolts and the throw axles are a little bit of an afterthought. Now they just jut out from the sides and they sit in basically exposed to the wind. It's probably only one watt, maybe even two watts at the most, but as we know of aerodynamics, it's all about these aggregation of gain. So I have a little bit of a solution. So if you are using a bike that's got standard brakes, caliper brakes, then it's likely you've got a quick release skewer like this one with quite a skinny skewer going through or axle going through the wheel. Now you can search for something that has a slightly slimmer, thinner and more aerodynamic handle to it. That might take a little bit of research. But then we also have our through axles. So those that are used on bikes with disc brakes like this one here. Again, this one still has quite a big handle coming off to the side to allow me to release it. But given that it is screwed in, as you can see here on this thread, then it can actually use a hex key or an Allen key to screw it in and therefore removing that handle completely. Now again, this may take a little bit of research to find the right one for your bike in terms of its length, the length of the thread on it and also the width, but it is quite a good saving. Now the position and the shape of our bottles on our bike can also have a huge effect on our aerodynamics. So one option is to completely hide it from the wind and for that you'd want to put it behind you. So you can have it like this where it's behind the saddle. This, In this case it's attached to the rear of the seat post but you can also attach them to the rear of the saddle. Another option is to have them on your down tube or your seat tube here. But if you are going to do this, then you really want to consider having an aero bottle. Given that this is exposed to the wind, the air is going to flow around the frame and then into the bottle. But then, of course, we have probably the better preferred option for triathlon, and that is between the aero bars. Now, before all this integration, I actually used to use just a standard bottle with a standard bottle cage and literally attach that to the aero bars. It worked well, and it was considered to be fairly aerodynamic. But now we have this full integration. Now, this actually literally integrates the bottle to the stem, the aero bars, and then into the frame. And it almost creates this fairing that looks part of the bike. It's actually believed that this is faster than not having one at all. It also then allows the athlete to stay in their aero bars to take fluid on without moving from the aero bars at all, which in turn then improves their aerodynamics and their speed. Okay, now I'm gonna step away from the bike and the equipment and focus more on us. Yes, we can change our position on the bike, we can change the clothing that we use, but what about shaving our legs? Yeah. The debate has been out for years as to whether shaving our legs for cycling and triathlon is for fashion or for function. But with more and more wind tunnel testing over the last few years, we've seen more and more studies that have been proving that shaving our legs actually has a significant difference. Specialized claim that it can save anywhere between 50 to 82 seconds over a 40 kilometer time trial. And then if you theoretically equate that to an Ironman, that's around five minutes. So whether you believe it's quite as substantial as that or not, there is still clearly a saving to be had. So if you don't shave your legs already, it's possibly worth considering. Okay, well, hopefully I didn't disappoint you with my aero hacks today, but as always, please do share your own in the comments section below and hopefully I can feature them on the channel in the future. Now, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. If you'd like to see one other aero hack that we didn't feature today, that was our aero race belt and a try DIY feature, you can click just here. If you'd like to see our top 10 triathlon hacks video, just click down here.